Man, I tell you, I love Robins. I still remember when I was a young kid back in the early 60s. Man, how time has flown. But in the early 60s, my mom and dad took me to a theater to see Mary Poppins. And a robin feathering its nest has very little time to rest. Well, ever since then, I've loved robins. And the thing I love about robins is that I was always under the impression that they migrate south in the winter. You know, they don't have the seeds and the insects and the worms especially to feed on. I mean, I tell you, in the springtime when you see robins arriving, they're down on the grass running around. And so many times, man, I've seen them grab a worm and just wrestle that long worm out of the ground. And they got this big worm like a long strand of spaghetti hanging out of their beak flying off to feed their chicks. The reason I'm talking about this is because, like I said, I'm observing stuff. I make videos. Cindy and I have over 10,000 videos on YouTube. I shouldn't say I. Cindy and I make videos. She was filming this morning uh, birds out in our walnut tree, crows and magpies and flickers all coming to go after the walnuts. But anyway, we love birds and we film everything. And when you do this and you're observing things, you become aware of certain things. And as I said, I was always under the impression that robins migrate south. Looked it up on the internet and well, no, they don't always do that. Sometimes they can stay uh, throughout the winter. And in 2015, going into 2016, that's exactly what Cindy and I found. We moved in to look after my dad after, well, he was very old and and sick and that's a whole different chapter i got videos up about it on youtube but uh living with my dad i have my computer desk set up right by a window looking out at the backyard and i was watching and i could see birds like this is a flicker look you know i, I mean i'm learning about nature firsthand sitting by a wi window in the house and i can grab a camera anytime I, did you did you know that birds eat snow in the winter when they don't have water? I, mean, I never knew that. I never thought about it. It was just uh, whatever. But what was really interesting is that 2015, 2016, there were robins that stuck around in the winter. And I got to tell you, it was a beautiful sight to see them coming into the backyard, landing in the apricot tree, and on this one occasion especially, man, it was snowing, big snowflakes. And there were robins, not a robin, not one that's lost, but there were robins in the tree as the snow is falling. There's two robins there. And we've seen a lot of other birds. The reason I'm talking about this right now, making the video, is that uh, if you observe things around you and this is what our ancestors used to do it doesn't matter if you lived in asia or africa or south America, wherever our ancestors before they had all the devices and telephone and tvs and radios and now computers and tablets and stuff you know they would watch they would learn from nature from their surroundings and they would pass that on to the next generation who would also continue learning from what's happening and pass it on to the next generation and so on and so on and this you know it's an interesting thing now what i learned and what i'm passing on to people right now is that in 2015 2016 we saw a lot of robins and they were here in the uh, fall in the winter time in the spring Something changed for 2017. And 2017, we've had big, horrendous wildfires all the way from California up to Alaska. And by the way, this isn't the first year we've had them. We've had them year after year. You've heard about the droughts in California, uh, Oregon, Washington State, wildfires, British Columbia. We had record fires uh, this year. A lot of areas were burnt, pine trees, pine forests, grasses and stuff like that. And I noticed this year that we've had a great decline of birds around. 
Now, I don't know if they have just chosen a different area to go to because, you know, they can sense the smoke, they know there's fires, there's no food, no place for them to nest and stuff like that. So did they just automatically go to a different area? Or is there something more taking place? And scientists are saying there's a mass extinction event taking place right now on planet Earth. I mean, we are losing species all over the place. I mean, one of the photographs in National Geographic that got an award this year is of a black rhino, very endangered. Basically, I'm going to be blunt about it, rotting in the sun, but its horn is sawed off. Somebody killed a majestic black rhino to take its horn. And then in the last week, the big news event coming out about uh, things is that uh, mass extinction is also impacting the insect world. And we depend on insects. Birds depend on insects. Fish depend on insects. Plants for pollination depend on insects. All of these things. And we are losing our home. We're losing our surroundings, the creatures that we depend on. And we're not going to be able to live without them. I mean, it doesn't matter if you think about insects or birds or fish or whatever. You know, we're polluting the hell out of the oceans, the air, the ground. Uh, there's uh, agriculture on mass scale now that is, you know, it, it, everything has changed on our planet. So anyway, have you seen robins this year as you have in past years? Please let it be known because... It's, it's up to all of us to keep an eye on, on our planet, on our home. And, uh, it, it's just heart-wrenching to imagine that one day these could be lost. It's actually easier to find them without the...